All right, folks, I was on my way back to my vehicle and um, this is what I've encountered here. A continuation of this. Po police making their way down Broad Street here, trying to disperse this crowd. Tear gas has been deployed. And a chaotic scene. This rally had now protesters continuing to launch fireworks. This is a dangerous situation, folks. No question about it. Tear gas certainly has been deployed, David. And a dangerous situation. This is the third part of this event after Yeah, right, Deb Debbie, I need I gotta get some ride gear, apparently. And folks, you gotta wonder where this response comes from. The context of which certainly relates to the months upon months of ATV and moped riders making their way through the city. Mayor Lorza crushing many of these vehicles and now you wonder if this incident on Sunday, the culmination of that crackdown. And um, we were on our way back to our vehicle, several of us journalists, when we encountered this scenario here. You can smell burnt rubber. smoke from fireworks and uh, tires and a joint effort by state and Providence police here to clear this scene protesters continuing to set off fireworks a chaotic scene here in Providence as this rally which began as a peaceful demonstration at the Elmwood library quickly turned into a march on Providence Police Headquarters. From there, things began to escalate primarily after a protester tossed fireworks at the police. And now, as the protesters make their way back through the south portion of the city, state and Providence Police have met them there with canine units, tear gas, and riot gear. They in turn being met with fireworks. And this is an extremely dangerous situation. This is B Town's live coverage of the Justice for Jamal rally that has quickly turned into a dangerous showdown between police and protesters. 
And I'll have photos and a recap of this whole evening later on all social media channels. We'll also be live tomorrow with Mayor Alorza and then Governor Raimondo. Mayor Alorza and company at 11. Governor Raimondo at 1 p.m. You can also watch that here on my Facebook. Alana, this is a protest that is coming on the heels of an a 24-year-old male who was appeared to have been struck by a police cruiser. He was a part of a 300-plus person motorbike and ATV group that was riding through the city, actually multiple municipalities in Rhode Island on Sunday, that uh, concluded with an altercation between... Hold on a second here. Police and uh, and Mr. Gonzalez, Jamal Gonzalez. He was in a video, several videos, and and reviewing evidence. It does appear that he was struck by the police cruiser. But uh, an investigation is ongoing. Mayor Lorza calling upon the FBI to take a look at this. I talked to Attorney General Peter Narona yesterday. Their office is looking at this. And right now, just trying to make our way back to our vehicles, several journalists, myself, Steve Klampkin, WPRO, Madeline List of the Providence Journal, Steve Alquist, Uprise Rhode Island. We were all trying to make our way back to our vehicles parked further down on Elmwood Avenue and um, came upon this scene that you're witnessing right here. So if you're just tuning in right now, this is part three of a series of videos that I've been posting all night. This is an absolute, what's going on, bro? What's going on man? This is an absolute uh, breakdown here at this point as the protesters confronting police officers and vice versa. We're trying to make our way through the back roads. Luckily, I know my way around here. Uh, you're welcome, Alana. And uh, we'll see if we can make our way back to Elmwood Avenue. Holy Moses, folks. The situation rapidly evolving this evening here. And uh, look, you know, it was a peaceful event without question um, for, the, for the most part until we started to see fireworks tossed by a select, again, I want to emphasize, folks, let's be honest. It was a select small group of the protesters that engaged the police with fireworks. And I was actually live on the radio doing a report live on, on, the, on air when and, and the, the story was kind of, hey, you know what? This is and has been a fairly peaceful protest getting the message out that, hey, look, Number one, this investigation into this matter needs to speed up. And number two, in general, community voices need to be put front and center in matters of this, this sort. Well, as I was on the phone doing my call and report live on the radio, all of a sudden a firework was tossed 
at a police officer. And uh, that continued for a few moments before finally state police intervened. And by the way, folks, we're at Lockwood and Broad Street right now. Making my way back on foot through the south side here to where my vehicle is, the location of which I won't, uh, I won't disclose. Got my earplugs in, but um, you know somebody was telling me, a buddy of mine Joe, a friend and a loyal listener to the program. He was telling me he wanted to get me fit for uh, riot gear. Not just for this event, but in general. And I'll tell you right now, we gotta, we're going to consider that one here, folks, at B-Town. Because uh, can't get much closer than I am right now without being clad in a more significant uh, set of clothes. Now ATVs and motorbikes scattering. I see them. I'm walking down Broad Street here. I'm going to make my way back across. The distinct smell of burnt rubber, smoke in the air. And again, Providence and State Police engaged with um, a handful of these protesters that are uh, that were in a bit of a chaotic situation. Y'all, I'm safe. I'm doing, I think, the safer thing right now by getting away. I mean, I was pretty close, admittedly. And, uh, getting the hell out of, out of, out of the way right now. How much fog there is tonight adding to the vibe, if you will. And, um, Wow, what a scene tonight, folks. And you know what's going to be interesting? I want to see how, I really want to see how the, 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 your, the Channel 10s, the Channel 12s, I want to see how they report this. I want to see, see how they describe it because I think it's really important to note that this was a peaceful event what do I feel the progress of this protest? I think that there was progress made from the perspective of organizations in the state demonstrating that they can they can organize quickly and in large numbers and do so without getting on the highway and things of that sort. We saw last, remember last week, we saw the, the Prov X kids get on the highway. You know? Well, I'm getting a message that Facebook is blocking the live stream. Interesting from some people. Well, we got, you know, that's interesting because I see there's about 50 people on here now. That's fascinating. We're gonna look into that as well. But what I really wanna know, like I was about to say, is and it's Gina of course my you know when I decided to do this it wasn't just for uh, you know the high fives and and so forth okay I'm glad Judith you're still here okay that's that's great to know uh, we got to go all in on this and what I think what I was about to say is that I just want to see how this is covered you know I want to see how this is covered now I know Brian Crandall he was here for Channel 10. He's a great reporter. And he and I were talking before this all got started. He knows the players, right? It's not really the protesters and the police, okay? You've got a nuance here where tonight you had some people who elevated this and were tossing fireworks at the police, right? Um, you had some people on dirt bikes who were putting on a bit of a demonstration, okay? 
And okay, I'm glad to hear uh, that you guys are able to hear. That's good to know. The least, at least some of the audience were were okay with. But um, you know, and by the way, folks, I'm pretty far away from. I'm making my way back towards Elmwood Avenue, but now I'm a few blocks south of uh, where this is going on. And geez, boy, the showdown is so much more than just right versus wrong, left versus right, aggressive versus passive. This is... This is a case by case basis of a person person A decides to be act out in a more aggressive manner on either side, whether that be on the police side, whether that be on the protester side. I think you saw that with the police officer, the six year police veteran that in my opinion it really looks like without question completely overreacted in the pursuit of of Mr. Gonzalez on, on Sunday, uh, you know, especially when you examine the fact that turning onto a, a one way street, you know, you've got the, you've got the blockade already in place. Why go on the sidewalk after a guy on a motorcycle in any situation, right? So you got to ask yourself that, but then at the same time, why throw fireworks at police tonight? You know, when you have a demonstration that seems like it's heading in a building momentum, building consensus. So it's a it's a it's a tough one. Yeah, my, my position on that, I mean, and look, I went down to the site of the crash. I've examined footage, I've examined photographs, we've got requests for body cam footage out right now. I've talked I've talked to Mayor Alorza, I've talked to attorney attorney general Narona, I've talked to Chief Clements. I've talked to Commissioner Perry, okay? And that's how I've come to that conclusion. All right? And there's going to be another announcement tomorrow. They're bringing in the FBI to look at this. They got the Attorney General looking at it. They're not doing that because of, a, of an accident, okay? Yeah, people act on emotions, not reason. And I think that in some cases, that's right. You think about the artist side, you know, that is... Um, you know, that the, the emotional aspect of things is super important, but when you're talking about action before an election, trying to understand uh, how to dial things back down so something can be done, you're right. The emotion can get in the way. I don't disagree. I don't disagree at all. So I think that's it for tonight. I'm almost back to uh, my vehicle, the Blackbird, as, as, we, uh, as we call it. And uh, I'm going to go post some photos on Instagram and uh, take a step back. I'll see you tomorrow morning, 11 o'clock with Mayor Lorza and company. And then one o'clock live with Governor Raimondo and company, her, her cadre of assistants and associates. Um, there's a lot to talk about. And be safe out there, folks. I mean, if you're in Providence right now, this is not over. Uh, there are still remnants going on, but uh, until tomorrow, we'll talk soon.